New York's Empire State Building flashes in red and white like a siren. A sky-high tribute to the ambulance workers tearing through the streets below, carrying COVID patients night and day to hospitals across the city. Nearly a thousand people have died here, roughly a third of all US deaths in one single city. I've welled up in tears at times, you know, when we take somebody's loved one out of their home. Um, nobody's allowed to go with the patients. So we literally just take their loved ones and oftentimes we know that they will never see them again alive. And these people will most likely die in a bed alone. It's, it's, it's profound sadness. With the hospitals full to capacity, they've pitched an overflow in Central Park, a makeshift medical center to house another 68 virus patients. In place of joggers and dog walkers, volunteers now hastily assemble shelves and unpack boxes, they hope, full of equipment that will save people's lives. We expect to be full uh, by the end of the day tomorrow. So we have ventilators in an ICU that are set up and ready to go. And this is why they need it. Look inside this emergency room at Brookdale Hospital in Brooklyn. <laughs> Groaning patients are lined up bumper to bumper along tightly packed corridors. And every ward, every inch of this hospital and its 370 beds is being overrun by COVID-19. Well, this is a war zone. It's a medical war zone. Every day I come in, what I see on a daily basis is pain, despair. It's not easy coming here when you know that what you're getting ready to face. More than 20 patients have died here and the morgue is already full. So outside, the now familiar sight of white refrigerated trucks to shoulder the overflow. Staff too are stressed. From doctors to cleaners, equipment is running out and they worry for their own safety. We are scared too. We're fighting for your lives and we're fighting for our own lives. We're trying to keep our head above water and not drown. We need support, we need gowns, we need gloves, we need masks, we need more vents, we need more medical space. That's why they've taken over the paediatric unit and this is the tiny window that family can look through to see their loved ones alone and in intensive care. Only some of them don't get to leave alive, wheeled away like so many others. The New York governor today begged President Trump to send help now, saying he'd been forced to buy ventilators from China because it was like bidding on eBay to secure enough in his own country. Overwhelmed hospital workers, he says, deserve more. This is ongoing and the duration itself is debilitating and exhausting and depressing. Uh, I'm speaking to healthcare professionals who say, look, more than physically tired, I'm just emotionally tired. Uh, seeing the pain, seeing the death that they're dealing with every day. As bad as New York is, other states like Florida are brimming with infections too. So these two cruise ships with hundreds of passengers have been ordered to stay offshore. The Zandam sailed from South America and was scheduled to dock on March the 21st. But with four dead on board and 100 others ill, the governor has refused them entry. They say they're looking for quarantine space to isolate all 415 passengers. But until then, they'll be left stranded at sea. Well, the pain there you saw there in my piece on the ground is, of course, translating every day into economic pain. Today, the investment bank Goldman Sachs said it now expects growth in the U.S. in the first three months of this year to plunge 9 percent and a staggering plunge of 34 percent in the second quarter here in the U.S. in the months ending in June. Those are levels not seen since the Great Depression. It does then predict a sharp uptick across the summer months, provided, of course, that we get a handle, we get control of this virus. It also predicts another five and a half million people, five and a half million people will claim an insurance benefit in the US this week alone. That's added to the 3.3 million who claimed it last week. So you really get a sense, a picture building of how quick the US economy is unraveling because of coronavirus. The World Bank also weighed in today saying it saw 
at least another 11 people being avid, added to the poverty line across East Asia and the Pacific, it said, unless urgent action is taken ominously. It also predicts that China could, in fact, post, post practically no growth at all this year under a worst case scenario, down from about 6% growth in 2019. So you put that growth, lack of growth in China together with pain in the US, and what you have is the world's two biggest economies suffering this year. And as we know, if they suffer, then the rest of us suffer too. And the only conclusion we can draw is that it will take a long time for everyone to recover. Siobhan Kennedy. Well, I'm joined now from Annapolis by the Republican governor of Maryland, Larry Hogan. He issued a stay-at-home order yesterday in order to slow the spread of the virus in his state. Thank you for joining us, Governor. Every day we see sort of bizarre contradictions between what state leadership is saying and what the president says in his press conferences. Are you, as the leader of a state able to do what you need to do to protect your people? Well, look, it's really uh, the federal government and all the states taking uh, the actions that they believe are necessary to keep our citizens safe and keep them alive. And we're each taking independent actions, but we're also trying to work together. In addition to being the, the governor of the state of Maryland, which surrounds our nation's capital here, right here in the Washington area, I'm also the chairman of all the nation's governors. And We've been working together with the federal leaders, but quite frankly, uh, we, you know, we're in an extremely difficult uh, situation here in this global pandemic that is impacting you in the UK, and it's, it's now gripped the United States, not just in New York, but all 50 states in America, and uh, right here in the nation's capital region. Uh, in my state and uh, neighboring Washington, D.C. and Virginia yesterday had a stay-at-home order. 14 and a half million people are now required to stay in their homes, and we're about two weeks behind New York, which you're just just uh, seeing what you were just talking about, the same crisis is about to hit us here. You have a very different health care system to the one we have over here for people who don't have their own means. What does it mean for them if they don't have insurance? Right. Well, we're trying to address the needs of every single person that's uh, hit by this, whether they have insurance or not. And the, the issue right now is not so much whether people have means or whether they have insurance. It's about the capacity of our health care system and whether or not we have uh, a, enough uh, a hospital bed capacity and intensive care units and respirators and emergency room and enough personnel, as you see what's happening in New York. It's not so much about uh, whether people have the, uh, the insurance or the funding. It's about whether we actually have the ability to take care of so many sick people at the same time that are just surging our hospitals. And what do you make of the leadership of Donald Trump through this? Well, look, I think they're making some attempts to, uh, to, to catch up, but there's been some mistakes that have been made. And, um, but they have been reaching out to the governors, and governors are taking their own independent actions. But uh, they've, they've taken some steps recently to try to try to get behind this thing. But there's no question that uh, we're behind the eight ball, and uh, we've, got some, uh, we've got some important uh, work to get done. And we're all, I don't want to point fingers about what hasn't been done or who made which mistakes. Uh, but we've got to work together somehow uh, because we're all in this together, not just in America, but around the world. What we're looking at in Britain is the availability of testing, the availability of antibody testing, uh, how we're going to try getting yes. back to normal, uh, all those sorts of things. I mean, do you have the same shortages in the United States when it comes to things like ventilators? The this, the, the exact same issues, John. Uh, so testing is a huge problem. Um, we don't have enough testing. We don't have enough masks or personal protective equipment or ventilators. Um, and uh, so the exact same issues that you're faced with in the UK or what we're faced with here, it really is a global issue. And we're all trying to, to buy these things on the, on the global market. I heard, heard just a moment ago talking about it's like buying on eBay, on eBay. And we have 50 states in America all competing with one another and competing with the federal government and competing with other nations around the world to try to get what is really just a very small supply and not enough of any of these things anywhere in the globe.